this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a full A to Z dropshipping tutorial on how you guys can build your first profitable dropshipping source all with zero dollars in ad spend. This method is the exact way that I personally use to build and start all of my stores. We're going to be going over everything starting from how to pick the product, how to pick a supplier and link it to your store. We'll be doing a complete live Shopify store build with the product that we chose, exactly how to market your product and make sales all with spending zero dollars in ads. And guys, I highly recommend staying for the full video because each and every segment of this is extremely important if you want to be successful with this. And if you just do exactly what I do in this video, you guys will have your first profitable dropshipping stores up and running in no time. So without further ado, let's get into the first part of this video. All right guys, so this first segment is product research. We're actually gonna be finding a winning product live in this segment. I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I do it in all my product criterias. I'm also gonna be taking you guys into my burner account and showing you exactly what you need to do to create your own burner accounts. And we'll be finding our product through that burner account. All right guys, so here we are inside of our burner account. So what you wanna do with a burner account is once you make the new TikTok account, I just kinda wanna like and engage with as many product related posts and accounts as possible. And that's gonna trick the algorithm into thinking that you actually like that stuff and it will actually show you only products. So let me give you an example here. If we go into my homepage, so as you can see, the first video is a product and it's actually kind of gone viral, 56,000 likes. And if we scroll onto their page, yeah, so they've gone viral recently. All right, so their viral video got 1.4 million views. This was posted just a few weeks ago. So this product might be worth a test. Um, what we would do next is plug this into Shop Hunter to see if it's actually making money. I think I'm gonna pass on this one for now just because I don't really like diffusers and humidifiers. I just feel like it's kind of a saturated market um, and this is just isn't unique enough for me to want to mess with it. So we'll just keep scrolling here. Every single TikTok, guys, is a viral product that's going viral recently. So it's super easy to find products, guys. All you would do is just keep scrolling through here. And basically, if you see a product that you like that has gone viral within the last three months, that's super important. And once you find a product that meets that criteria, you will want to plug it into Shop Hunter. And I have a link for Shop Hunter in my description if you want to get signed up with them. You, Shop Hunter basically lets you see all the revenue of any Shopify store, which is a game changer because you really don't want to be testing products that aren't making money. You'll just end up wasting your time. And I've done that to myself. I've posted videos and gotten 15 million views with no sales so you guys definitely don't want that to happen to you it's very irritating so just make sure you use shop hunter it's a huge game changer and i'll be showing you guys how to use it in a second so the second way you can use this burner account and this is kind of my favorite way is actually looking up hashtags like tiktok made me buy it and amazon finds so we'll go here to search i kind of just search like tiktok made me buy it like this and as you can see already has products up and also guys too you really want to make sure your products are problem solving to a degree you can test a product that's not problem solving if it actually has sales the sales are kind of low i would make sure it's problem solving because if it's not problem solving and has low sales i would also stay away from that just because you're going to have a hard time getting people to buy it and what i like to do guys is go up to filters here and you can actually filter this to last three months and then most liked and this will basically bring up all the videos slash products that are the most liked and also viral within the last three months. So if we keep scrolling, looks like we have a candle here. This is a big one. It actually sold really, really well and could also be worth a test because fitness does really well in January as well as Q4. So definitely a good Q1 product if you guys are looking to sell something. Um, this is a vegetable chopper. I've been seeing this for a while, but personally, I looked into the margins on it and it's kind of hard to sell this for a good price. So I also stay away from that one. Those are the glow balls. They're kind of saturated. so. I I wouldn't really sell these if I were you guys. We'll just keep scrolling down through here. So this is a viral product as well, but it's not problem solving guys. So I doubt this really sold well. So personally, I just wouldn't mess with it, but the content is super easy to go viral with because it's entertaining. But viral videos definitely don't necessarily equal sales, which is why it's very important to make sure your product is problem solving and also selling. So I'll just keep scrolling through here. Um, oh, this is interesting. So this is like a juicer. I like this product guys, actually. Reason being is this is kind of like the Blendjet smoothie maker. And that went huge guys over the last like five years. And there was also another product on TikTok that blew up that was similar to it. And it did the same thing and people made huge amounts of money off it. And the amount of content you can make with this product guys is a lot. You can make all kinds of different fruits and juice concoctions and it would just do really well. And you can promote this product guys as like a healthy lifestyle product, which also kind of fills into the fitness niche, which will also do super, super well in Q1. And it's 
is also a good Christmas product as right now it's December, so people might like to get this as a gift for people. And this video guys went viral October 9th and it has 1.3 million likes. So this is really, really good. And this guy's not even really selling it guys. He's just kind of reviews Amazon products. And it's kind of important guys that you find one to three competitors because if you don't have any competitors, you're not really gonna be able to check to see if they're actually making money on the product. All right guys, so we're gonna look up real quick to see if there's any competitors. And I just kind of search basically the product. So we'll search like portable juicer. All right, here's another video guys. Um, I don't think this is a dropshipper yet. So this is like another account that kind of like reviews products. We'll just keep scrolling. All right guys, so we actually found a competitor here and he has 8,000 followers. Let's see if he has any like good viral videos. Okay, so his last video was actually 54 minutes ago. So it's a good sign that he's posting actively because that means he's making money. If he wasn't posting actively, chances are he's probably not making any money. So we'll keep scrolling. Um, 175,000 views. Oh, here we go. So this video was posted four days ago, guys, and has 1.1 million views. And I don't recommend guys doing like, I'm gonna be honest, my product is useless. List. like you probably shouldn't say that if you're trying to sell the product but we'll see how his sales are see if they're good enough to sell all right guys so it looks like he's gotten a lot of views and he's been posting for a pretty long time so i'm sure he's making money so i like this product enough we'll go plug this into shop hunter real quick and see if he's actually doing any numbers and if so we'll then use this product to build our store all right guys so i plugged the website into shop hunter so let's take a look at how much they've done so far um, so in the last 24 hours, they've done $137. So, so far this month, and that's starting December 1st, they've done about 800 bucks on the Juice-O-Matic. Um, it also looks like they have kind of a old version, old Juice-O-Matic, and that's done $300. So if we look at the chart over here too, this will actually give you a more dated look at their sales, kind of like the last two, three months. Um, as you can see, it goes back to October 15th. If you hover over these blue bars, November 18th, they did $321. They also did that the next day. Then the day after that, they did $553, then $349. So this is kind of when they went viral. As you can see, they don't have any sales from before. So they went viral around this time here, and that's when they started making the money. And if you guys add up all of these blue bars, which I did myself, it adds up to over $3,000. To be exact, it's $3,527. And that's from November 18th to December 12th. So in less than one month, they've done $3,500 organically, which is pretty good. We could definitely come in with a better website and better content and actually make more money. Let's go take a look at their website right now and see kind of what they got going on with that. So here's their website and they're using the Sense theme, which I highly recommend using. It's a free theme and I'll show you guys later in the video um, how to set up your stores with Sense. Um, I use it myself personally and they have a nice GIF here as their homepage image, which is good. Shop with confidence. That's good for like social social proof and stuff, showing people packing orders. I can build a lot of trust with the customer. And then they have what's called a featured product. Um, and I'll get into this more later, guys. You know, all the technicalities of Shopify and how they structure the websites and stuff. No need to worry um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at their product page real quick. Um, if we just click here. All right, so they're selling for $45.99. Um, we'll go take a look at AliExpress to see what their margin is. Um, I assume that's a pretty decent price. I did look on Amazon guys for this product and it's selling for $50 flat. So this is actually undercutting Amazon by four or $5, which is actually really good. Um, so their product page actually looks pretty good. It's um, super clean, super simple. One thing I will say though, is you probably shouldn't include this stuff. Like that's from AliExpress guys. And I never include that on my product pages. It just looks kind of factory and sketchy. It's just not something most people in this industry include. You don't really have to have any of this information either. So this also guys is something I like about the sense theme is you can have these drop down menus. These are super useful. And as you can see, you know, having the return policy and shipping on your product page is really good. Um, and I'll touch base and show you guys how to do that in the live Shopify store build. So just stay tuned for that. Yeah. So guys, and this is a product page. So when we build the website, we're actually going to take a lot of the images and stuff kind of similar to what they did. Um, they got all these from AliExpress. Um, I would highly recommend ordering the product guys and actually making the custom content content yourself. But when you test a product, what I do is I'll basically just copy the website of the competitor. And if I start getting views and sales, I'll then go in and make my own custom content and really beef up the website. Reason being is I don't want to create a super complex website, you know, put hours into it and then have the product just flop. Then I just wasted my time and did all that for nothing. So I definitely recommend kind of taking inspiration. And guys, you can do this. You're not going to get in trouble. You're not going to get sued. Like that's just not going to happen. Like these are drop shippers just like us. They're pulling these images from AliExpress. You're 100% fine to take them. Definitely recommend though, when you do go viral though, is changing everything on the website to make it more personalized because you don't want to have the exact stuff as your competitor. The customers might take notice of that and it might scare them off. Another reason you guys should do this is in the event that you actually go viral within your first couple of videos, at least you'll have some sort of website people can buy from and you don't miss out on the sales. You don't want to go viral and then end up not having a website ready and missing out on all that money. So, so just copy the competitor at first. And I don't recommend guys 
guys using the same name, definitely change the name of the brand as well as the logo. When I mean copy, just kind of use the same images and copywriting that they're using. Definitely, you know, change the colors if you want to and 100% change the name and logo. All right guys, so here we are in AliExpress and AliExpress is basically where you will source all of your products in the beginning. I personally don't ever fulfill orders through AliExpress. I simply use it to connect to my store. And I'll show you guys later in the video exactly how we connect products from AliExpress to the store and the platform we use that to do. This is basically where you'll find all your products, see what they're priced at so you can calculate your margins and then eventually move on to pushing that product to your store as well as importing all the reviews, which I'll also be showing you how to do that later in this video as well. And AliExpress guys, for those of you who don't know, is basically kind of like the Amazon in China and it's owned by Alibaba. So we'll just go here and look up um, portable juicer. And we'll see if this comes up. So, oh, okay, so first product it came up and it looks like it's priced at 28, so we'll click on this one. Um, it has 45 orders on AliExpress, which is fine. It's priced at $28, so he was selling for $45.99. So that's about a $17.59 profit margin, which isn't that bad. I usually like to shoot for over $15 of profit, so that's actually right in the range I like to um, shoot for. Um, so over here, you know, they have a bunch of little supplier images that you can also use on your website. Again, I only recommend using these in the beginning, guys. I don't recommend using supplier images in the future. And before we go on with the live store build, guys, I want to make sure that we can find a good supplier. So we can scroll through here and really let's see if there's any more. So it looks like there's another one here, but they're priced too expensive. This one is $6. Most likely has super expensive shipping though. So $60 for that one. And there's always usually more suppliers, guys, than just one. So definitely look through and see which one has the best price as well as the best shipping costs. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about shipping time. I highly recommend switching to a better supplier, either Zendrop, which can offer faster shipping, or a private supplier. If you guys actually want to have access to a private supplier i can get you guys hooked up with one if you just simply dm me on instagram i offer it in my private mentorship program just something you know if you want to have super fast shipping times really build a brand around your product so just shoot me a dm on instagram if you guys are interested in getting a private supplier all right guys, so this looks like the cheapest supplier I can find. We'll go ahead and jump into Shopify and I'll walk you guys exactly through how to build the store, how to link your supplier and product, as well as price it and do all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for this next part. It's super important guys. All right guys, so here we are in Shopify and Shopify guys is the platform that you're gonna use to sell your products and also host the website through. And Shopify costs about $29.99 a month. It usually has a two week free trial. But as you can see here, it actually has a three month trial for only a dollar a month, which is actually a really good deal. So if you guys are looking to build your first store, it now is like the perfect time because you can actually do it very cost effectively. And since Shopify's free trials are only usually about two weeks, that's as long as I usually will test a product for. So I actually never really pay for Shopify unless I actually am making money off of my product. So if you don't get sales within the first two weeks, I just kill the product and cancel the Shopify store and I'll actually return the product to Amazon, get my money back for that. You will though, however, lose the money you spent on the domain, which is usually about 15 bucks. So not bad at all to test a product in terms of like risk reward factor. So definitely very cost effective. And since I spend no money on marketing, this guys can basically be done for about $15 max so if you have no money this is like the perfect strategy and i really want you guys to be successful with this so really make sure to pay attention guys and just do exactly what i do throughout here and you guys will be successful at some point you will fail a lot i actually had 22 failed stores before i had my first winning product so guys if you're struggling definitely keep being consistent and persistent and pushing through all the failures because eventually you will have a winning product and you will make money and if at any point in this video i actually don't cover something or answer a question that you might have definitely leave a comment below I'll, re I'll be responding to every single comment guys so please comment below any questions or anything i missed in the video i will get back with you and if i don't respond to your comment shoot me a dm on instagram and i'll get back to you there so if this is your first time guys um i would just hit the start free trial button here um, i'm not gonna do that because i already have an account but you'll basically sign up with your email address and it will just take you into the shopify admin which i'm about to show you in a second here so super simple just use your email to sign up with the free trial and you'll be all good to go so i'll meet you guys inside the shopify admin all right guys, so once you put in your email address, you'll basically pick your store name. And I wouldn't put too much thought into this guys because you can change it eventually, but usually I just kind of go with my brand name. And for this brand, I actually picked the name JuiceMate just because like the domain was available. I usually base the names off of the domain I can get so that way it matches. So we'll just type in here JuiceMate and I did JuiceMate without the E because that was what was um, available. And it actually kind of looks kind of good. Click create store. 
All right, guys, and once you through that part there, it'll take you these questions. These are pretty simple. So like, are you already selling? I'll usually just say I'm playing around. Do you sell products to drop shipping? I actually click no, guys, because I don't want Shopify to kind of know that I'm drop shipping because they don't really like it. They support it, but I've had payment holds because I was drop shipping when I went viral. They actually put like 15% hold on all my sales for like three months because they were concerned about shipping time since they knew I was drop shipping, even though I had good shipping time. So just to keep myself off their radar, I'll put no. Then I can ignore all those. Um, current revenue, I just put zero dollars and then industry. You can pick your industry um, for this one. I guess we're just kind of, I just put other just because I don't really know. All right, guys, so next this is just kind of personal information. Um, I'll fill this off off camera for obvious reasons, but just kind of put in your address, city, state, zip code, country, stuff like that. And I would not select this because most likely you don't have an LLC. I actually have an LLC and eventually do recommend doing that, but I would wait till you're actually making a little bit of money before you make an LLC. And I could do a video on that in the future. I would not worry about the business side of things in terms of like legalities and things like that. After you're done filling out all that information, just click enter my store and um, we'll go from there. All right guys, so here we are inside of our store. Um, it'll immediately take you to the homepage. Um, and as you can see here, it kind of prompts you with like, add your first product, customize the theme, you know, just things that you need to do to set everything up. And we'll be going through all of this, so don't need to worry about that. Yeah, so the first thing I always do guys is I'll pick the plan because there's only so many things you can do inside Shopify before you've actually set up a plan with them. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll click pick a plan. And I always do monthly guys. You can do yearly, but obviously you'll be paying more money up front. So in order to avoid that, I usually just go with monthly. And obviously right now they're doing a dollar a month for the first three months, which is really good guys, because usually it's a two week free trial. And then after that you pay $29.99. So you can basically test a product for a couple months and not even have to worry about paying for your Shopify plan. So it's really, really nice. Basically just click choose this plan. And I wouldn't worry guys about the other Shopify plans. You don't need those at all unless you're doing really big numbers. So just focus on the basic plan. All right guys, so here we'll basically just select monthly. All right guys, so we got the congratulations. So everything's good. We got the plan all set up. So I'll just X out of that. So now I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through the basics of the Shopify admin so you understand everything. All this stuff over here, the settings, so just so you guys are comfortable with it and I can answer as much questions as possible. So up here guys, it says Juice Mate, so that's our store name. And if you have other stores, you can in fact link them through the same Shopify account you created at the start. You will, however, have to pay individually for each and every store a separate monthly payment. So just keep that in mind. But right now with the $1 for three months, it's actually super cheap to have multiple stores since it's only a dollar a month for the first three months. So that's also good if you wanna test multiple products. In the future, when you guys have this all set up and I'll show you that too but it'll have like your live sales data there as well as the sessions and you can kind of see how much money you've made as well as how many people have been to your site and all the details so we'll look at that later we come down to here this is the orders tab and once you guys get sales all those orders and the customer information will be right in here stored for you and you can actually mark the orders as fulfilled which will then send emails to the customer saying the order's been shipped out and that process guys will be pretty much completely automated whether you're fulfilling through AliExpress or using a private supplier. Deezer is the app we use to connect the products from AliExpress to Shopify will automatically send customer shipping updates. So does my private supplier and also so does Zendrop and other supplier apps like that. So you really don't have to worry guys about managing the orders list too much. And if you need to like access any of the customer's orders information, you, this is the place to do it. You can see their tracking numbers. You know, if you get questions like where's my order, um, they'll give you an order confirmation number. You can find it right in here, then look up their tracking number and see what the status of their order is. You can also see their address and you know things like that that you would need to help the customer as well as the shipping partner get the order fulfilled to them here you have you know drafts um, I don't really mess with drafts you won't really need to mess with that um, and then abandoned checkout so when customers come to your store and add a bunch of stuff to cart and initiate checkout Shopify can actually save that data that they input and if they abandon the checkout it'll actually be stored here and you can then send them emails to come recover that and you can actually recover a lot of money in lost sales all right guys so here's the products tab and this is when we import our products Product from AliExpress, it'll show up here. And this is where you can kind of edit, you know, the product description, the pricing, the images, all the things pertain to the product. And then, you know, you have the inventory tab. Um, I don't really do this because we don't have inventory stored. We kind of track that through our private supplier or AliExpress in general. Transfers, you don't really need to mess with this again, more inventory stuff, collections. So we have like right now, the default is homepage collection. And basically you can create little collections, you know, like best sellers or featured, and you can put a bunch of products in to that to kind of make it easy for customers to see what products you want to sell them. It makes it easy to kind of categorize the products that you want to sell to the customers on the website. And then here you can also do gift cards. Um, I don't really mess with this either, guys. It's just something you don't need. And then this tab here, guys, is the customers tab. So this is kind of similar to the orders tab. I guess it's more geared 
towards the customer and their information. I don't personally really use it though. I kind of access all order and customer information in the orders tab, but it's still kind of a useful tool that Shopify adds in. Here's finances guys. So again, you don't need this until you start making sales because then you'll start using this. But if we scroll down, you know, it can kind of show you your net sales, gross profit, your profit margin, earnings, you know, payouts and things like that. So it, it can be very useful. Here's your billing. So, so this will kind of come and show your subscriptions. This is the analytics tab guys. And I'm sure you've seen this before from a bunch of people, you know, they show their results here and stuff. So this will show you your sales from a specific date range. So this is today, you know, you can come in here, go all the way back, you know, you can select certain dates to see what numbers you did on those dates. And it has a lot. So show your sessions guys and sessions are basically website visitors. So if someone goes on your website, that is a session. Turning customer rate has your conversion rate guys. And conversion rate is basically the percentage of people who come to your website and actually buy something. And it's a super important metric guys and a good conversion rate for drop shipping is I'd say anywhere from one to 3%. Anything above 3% is really, really good. Anything below 1% is really, really bad. Generally with organic marketing, you actually have conversion rates below 1% simply because you're getting such a huge amount of traffic from just random people. Whereas with paid ads, you have a higher conversion rate because it's more targeted traffic. But since, you know, conversion rate will tell you if your website is good or not. You know, if you have a super, super low conversion rate, generally it means your website needs work. Um, it could be that your website's too scammy or customers don't trust it or your product images are bad, you know, people just don't like the product when they see it on their website. It's a very important metric and definitely keep your eye on that. It'll also tell you how many added carts you had for the day or in that given date period, your reach checkouts and your conversions. So super useful box here. I'm um, definitely pay attention to that guys on a daily basis when you're getting sales because it will tell you a lot. Right here guys is your average order value. So this is another pretty important metric. Essentially, you know, if you're selling for $29.99 and most people convert at $29.99, your average order value will be $29. So obviously, you know, you want this to be much higher than your selling price. And I'm going to show you guys a lot of tactics you can use to actually raise that because, you know, if you're selling a product for $29.99, but your average order value is $45, you know, you're selling, you're making an extra $15. That means you're making an extra $15 per order, which is really good. And you can do this guys by adding in shipping upsells, cross sales, you know, bundles, upsells from other products, all things that can really increase your average order value. And I've literally had stores guys, I was selling a product for $19.99, but my average order value was $42. So I basically doubled my average order value. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can do that. So don't even worry about that. And this stuff down here, guys, isn't as important. You know, it'll show you your total orders, which, you know, generally you can kind of see that in your conversions up here. Top product sold by units. Um, generally, we do one product store. It's not that important. And then here, it'll actually show you your sessions by traffic source. So Shopify can break down to you where your people are coming from. So, you know, it'll say TikTok or 2000 from TikTok, 2000 from Instagram, direct, you know, things like that, which is actually really important to see how well your product is converting with specific audiences and, and social media platforms. And it'll also do the same thing as sales by social source. So it'll show you where your sales are coming from and what social platform that came from. And guys, that's pretty much all you need to know for the analytics tab. Come here, you know, you have reports. Again, I don't really mess with reports. It just kind of summarizes things for you. Again, it's just, it doesn't need to be that complicated. So I don't mess with it. Here's the live view guys. So again, you can see this on your homepage when you're actually got everything set up on Shopify, but it's kind of a nice little thing here. You can see the globe and we have visitors on your store. There will be kind of a blue dot. And when they buy something, it'll then turn purple and you can kind of track like live how many visitors are on your store at that time. And it's super fun to watch guys when you're going viral, you know, it, I've had it say like 1200 people people on right now and I'd be getting sales left and right. And it was awesome. So um, I definitely hope you guys can experience that and you will if you follow all my steps and work very hard to succeed with this, you guys will be able to have these kinds of results. And it'll basically show you, you know, total sales for the day, total sessions, customers, top products. And then here you can actually see live if you have any active cards or people checking out purchases, which is again, it's also really fun to watch. All right guys, so we can come down to marketing. So this is a marketing tab. And again, you know, you don't really use this as I teach organic marketing. You guys won't really mess with this tab. Tab. I've actually never used this. Even when I run paid marketing, it's just not really a useful thing. I never actually run marketing through Shopify. So you can kind of disregard this tab for now. All right, so here's the discounts tab, guys. This is super useful. You can actually create discount codes in here. I'm gonna show you how to do it really quick. So you just click create discount. So there's a bunch of different types, you know, you have the amount off products, amount off whole order in general, buy X, get one X, and then you have free shipping. You don't really need the free shipping one, guys, because I actually recommend having free shipping on all your orders, but Let's just come on here. The amount off products is kind of the most popular one. Um, and you can do a discount code where the customer manually inputs the discount code, or you can do one where it's automatically applied if a certain threshold is hit. And an example of this would be like, if they spend $50 or more, 
they'll get 10% off their order. So you can just kind of name it like, just do X Smith 10 for 10% off and we'll make it percentage based. 10 and so here's the applies to so basically you can do collections or specific products unless you have a bunch of products and you want to kind of run a promotion where it's 10 percent off you know christmas releases or things like that but most cases we'll be running one product stores so just do single product and then you know when we have our product connected you click it and select it and you can do like minimum purchase requirements like minimum purchase amount in dollars or no minimum i just usually do no minimum and then all customers for customer eligibility um, and you can actually limit to one use per customer which i highly recommend been doing for this discount simply because you know you don't want them to come in and use it a million times then you know start date now and then the time as well you can set it to now and then you would just click save discount to add it all right guys so that's pretty much all the tabs here that you need to know basics of the shopify admin the next important one is actually the online store and this is where we will be basically setting everything up from themes and this is everything hanging to your online store so we'll set a theme through here we'll publish the store as well as add any collections as well as add any pages and things like that so and guys when you first make your Shopify account, your store will be password protected. So once you set up that Shopify plan, you'll actually have the ability to remove this password. So we'll just go ahead and do that. You don't have to worry about anyone finding it or anything like that. So you're not really running any marketing yet. All right, guys. So here's where we can pick the theme. And the default theme with Shopify is the Dawn theme. And I don't really recommend using this, guys. You can, and it will work. Um, I'll be showing you guys another free theme that is much, much better and converts the best, in my opinion. So if we scroll down, we have the theme library. Here you can add a theme. If we scroll down, here's some of the popular free themes from Shopify they kind of show they're all pretty decent guys um, you can play around with these too and you know design multiples at once and then obviously when you have one you like you can then publish it but the main one I use guys is the free one sense which is right here it's a really really good theme and we can just click add right here to add it to our theme library all right guys, so it just loaded into our theme library right here. And basically you can customize this now and it won't be visible until you hit the publish button like this. As I build the store, I kind of like to look at it on my phone just to get an idea of what it's looking like so far. So I definitely click publish. And just like that guys, it is published. So, and guys, the first thing we're gonna do actually before we customize the store is actually set up a domain. And I always add my domain before I customize the store. It's just kind of a preference thing. If you don't do that, you know, it has kind of this domain. If you look up here, it says juicemate.myshopify.com. And you guys, you definitely don't want to sell your product with a domain like that. That's just a dead giveaway that you're drop shipping. And most people nowadays know about Shopify. And if they see Shopify, you know, they're going to be kind of sketched out. So it's super important to make sure that you have a good custom domain. It's just more trustworthy and makes your business look more legit. It will cost you $15. However, it's 100% worth it, guys. And that's pretty much the only expense you're really going to have with this. So to add your first domain, you'll come down here to settings. And um, don't be overwhelmed, guys. I'll be going through all of this stuff later in this video. Video, so it'll all make sense to you and it's actually super simple but we'll just scroll down to where it says domains and we'll click domain and all you do is just click buy new domain and you'll input your domain name that you want so we want juice mate so here we have juicemate.com is available, which is good. And guys, you want to make sure you have the .com domain. I wouldn't really mess with .net, .org. You know, that stuff just doesn't make you look very legitimate. You can get away with not doing the .com, but I don't know why you wouldn't. Just try to find a domain name that you can get the .com for. And um, a trick I usually do if your name's taken, actually, like let's say juicemate.com was taken, you could actually put shop juicemate in front of it. And I found that most of the time when you put shop in front of it, it's usually available and not taken. So just a nice little trick for you guys if you want to do that. So we'll go Go ahead and buy this domain and then i'll show you guys what to do next so if your domain is available you'll go ahead and click buy and then you know if you have your credit card information already inputted from setting up the plan you'll be able to just go right away and click buy domain and if not it'll just prompt you to add in your billing information and so you can then buy the domain all right guys so once your domain is bought you don't really have to do anything shopify immediately swaps it out and makes it active but one thing i will recommend you do is actually come down here to add a 40 email address and you want to add support um at whatever your domain name is. That way, you know, when you contact customers, they come to contact you, you have a professional email they can do. Cause you know, having Gmail is okay, but having an email address that's your website just makes you look much more trustworthy and professional. And you really wanna come off guys as professional and legitimate as possible so customers trust you and are comfortable buying from your website. So you'll just put in like support or you could do even do, you know, info or help, you know, whatever you wanna do. I usually just do support. And then you wanna add a receiving email address. And what this is gonna do guys, is every time they email support at juicemate.com, those emails will then be forwarded to whatever email I put here. So you can use your personal, but I kind of recommend creating a new Gmail or Yahoo, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right here. So I'll go ahead and input my email address for the brand. I did a custom one and I did juicemate. 
at yahoo.com. So then you just click save and you're all set to go on that guys. So that's pretty much all you need for the domain. It's all set up. You don't need to worry about it anymore. It's all good to go. All right guys, so we're all set to customize our store. Let's get into this and um, I'll show you exactly how I build my store. So you'll just click customize right here. And here is kind of the main interface. And guys, it might look a little overwhelming at first, but trust me, it is super simple. You'll get the hang of it. I'm gonna walk you guys through everything. So don't worry, um, you'll understand all of this. And if you, again, if you have any questions, comment below, I will be answering all comments and also send me a DM on Instagram if you are also interested in having further discussions about this. I'm open to responding to everything. Feel free to reach out if you need extra help. All right guys, so first thing I'm actually going to point out to you guys is you can see it's kind of in a desktop format and you can view it like this. And if you come up here to this little desktop icon and click it, you have the ability to view it from a mobile standpoint. And this is super useful guys because you actually wanna come through and design your store with the mobile form in mind because 99% of your traffic is gonna be from a cell phone since we're mostly marketing through TikTok and Instagram. You know, your images are all sized to this and I wouldn't really worry too much about desktop because again, less than 1% of your sales are gonna come from a desktop. So I wouldn't even really worry about the way this looks so much. You wanna definitely prioritize that and that's the first thing I suggest changing when you come in here. So as you can see here, we have kind of the home page, and this is called the sections. So basically you can edit the images. If we hover over image with text, you can see that's this right here. And if you were to click on it, you can then come in here and basically change out the main image right here. You can replace it. You can remove this section as a whole in general. You click hide, you know, see that takes it away. But I definitely recommend on this theme having main image with text. You can come down here, you know, you have the rich text, which is basically a text box where you can basically talk about your brand and things like that. And Shopify kind of breaks it down. You know, you have collage. So as you can see, you can put products in these. These are just little columns. Columns, you know, you can give info about your brand. Then at the very bottom, you know, you have to subscribe to our emails. And you know, it's important to kind of build an email list too. And every time someone buys, they will input their emails and you will build that email list. And you can then market to those people through email marketing, which is actually a really powerful tool. But that's all for more when you've kind of have a brand that's, you know, making good money and you kind of build it up a little bit. So I wouldn't, again, worry too much about it. And if we continue to scroll down, we have the menu and down here, you know, you'll have your links to like privacy policy, refunds, things like that, which I'll show you how to set up as well as like contact page. You know, here we have our store. You know, you can put an image down here if you want, you know, our promise. You know, little things like that to kind of help with your brand. And at the very, very bottom, you can see that's our name, Juice Mate, with Powered by Shopify. And I'll also show you guys how to remove the Powered by Shopify because you don't really want to have that on your website. Because again, you don't want to be associated with Shopify or dropshipping. Customers kind of get a little sketched out when they see that. It's super simple to remove, and I'll show you guys how to do that later in the video. So if we scroll back up to the top here, all right, so the next thing on the list is actually the theme settings. And here is kind of where you can mess with, you know, the colors of the theme. So if we kind of scroll down through here to the backgrounds, and the sense theme actually has two kind of options so you know you have these gradients which adds a bunch of color collages into it you know kind of makes it look really pretty or you can do kind of a solid color so if we remove this gradient see how it made the colors super like solid it's just that one color which is a really easy way to do it, and i kind of recommend doing it that way if we come here we can then change the colors to kind of whatever we want you know you can play around with it when it comes to colors though guys i only recommend doing three colors and that is your brand color black and white i wouldn't recommend using too many colors because you don't want to overstimulate the customer and you also want your website to look really clean, simple, and aesthetic. So stick to three colors, guys, brand color, white, and black. So we'll just leave it like this for now, guys. We'll definitely come back to this when we go to customize our store, but I just kind of want to walk you guys through everything first to make sure you understand all the theme settings and things like that. The next thing on the list down here is typography, and this will let you basically change the font of your site. I actually don't really mess with this too much. I kind of just keep it default because I think it looks fine, but if you do want to change the fonts, you can do that here. So after that is layout. And I don't really mess with this, guys. You don't really need that. So then, you know, you can come down to buttons here and, you know, you can mess with like the thickness, the opacity. I actually don't really mess with any of this stuff, guys. You don't really need that. Most of the stuff here you don't need. I never use it either. You can come here and add your social media, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok, which I would recommend doing, having that linked on your website because that makes you look kind of professional. Here, guys, this is called Favicon. So if you don't know what this is, it's basically, if you look up here to AliExpress, that little icon right there, that's a Favicon. So if you want to add that to your website as well, you can still be just input your logo image, which I do recommend doing. It's just another thing to make your brand look more established and legitimate. And then here's like currency. So you can do like show currency codes. Um, it's selected by default. So just leave it as is. Then the next thing is cart. Um, you can do like pop-up notification, page or drawer. I actually prefer to do the drawer type just cause you know, I use a couple apps that 
add upsells and discounts into the drawer that you can integrate into the drawer. So in the future, I'll show you guys how to do that. I would just keep it at either the pop-up or drawer. Either one works fine and works really well. And then guys, last is um checkout and we'll be kind of editing this later, but it's basically your checkout setting. So you know you can add a logo and super important to do this guys, but we'll come back to this in the future. I just wanna show you guys what it is so you understand. All right guys, and that's basically all the theme settings that you need to know. This here is basically app embeds. Um, when we add in our Luke's Reviews app, the app we use to import reviews from AliExpress, you'll actually, it'll show you that it will be integrated here, but you don't really need to mess with it in here. Um, it's just kind of for reference so you can see what apps are integrated in your store and you can turn them off and on in this page. So, and also guys, um, always make sure to come up here and hit the save button so you don't lose any progress because if you do make changes and exit out, it will actually delete all your progress. So. Make sure to click save and it will save your progress for you. All right guys, so we're gonna start the build of the Shopify store. Here we are at the header. The first thing I'd like to start with is the logo because I based the whole color scheme and design of the store kind of around that logo. So we're actually gonna head over to a software I use called Canva, which is amazing for building logos. And I'll have it linked below in my description for you guys so you guys can check it out. They have a free plan, which is really good and also a paid plan, which is actually amazing. And I use it on a daily basis for all my stores. I never have to pay for my logos to be created. I always just use it through Canva. So we'll go take a look at that and then we'll start designing the logo. All right guys, so here we are in the Canva homepage and um, it's very simple. Once you create an account and stuff, you know, if you go with the free plan or the paid plan, whatever you wanna do, you'll just come over here to create a design and you can do like whiteboard, you know, Facebook posts, logo, YouTube banners, videos, presentations, animated logos. Like Canva really has it all. Um, you can do pretty much every social media site, like even Instagram posts and stories. And you can really edit these guys pretty crazy. Like they have all kinds of different options and elements and you can actually upload pictures and do all kinds of fonts and stuff so i'll show you guys how to do it but um we'll get in the logo so this is kind of how you would start you have a blank canvas right here um you have what's called the design so they have kind of templates you can do and you can do like search templates so like business logos and they have all kinds of cool templates and you know this is a pro one so basically if they have a crown next to them it's for the pro members but like this one right here for instance doesn't have a crown so you could actually use this on the free plan and they actually have a lot of really good elements on free like you don't really have to have pro i personally have pro because i do this full time and i really build lots of logos i use it all the time for elements on my website so it's super super useful guys and i think it's only about 20 some dollars a month so it's actually fairly cheap if you guys are interested i have a link in the description for it so um, just click on that and you can get signed up. But so what I kind of like to do to start is I'll kind of come over to elements here. And these are like pictures and stuff like that. So you can come in here and type like fruit since we're doing like a juicer. And they have all kinds of little things. So you can just click it right here and boom, we have the apple right on the canvas. And you know, you could size it and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go with an orange guys because I feel like orange juice is just kind of an iconic thing when it comes to juice. And I feel like a lot of people would use a juicer to make orange juice. So this one's not bad. Um, I don't like how detailed it is though. I wanna keep the logo super Super simple and I highly recommend you guys do the same like you don't need to take like days and weeks and hours to build your logo guys it really should just take like five ten minutes especially when you're just testing a product like honestly you could just throw together a text with a nice font good colors and that's enough like you don't need a crazy logo especially when you're starting off now when you start getting sales and successful with the store then you can really invest your time or maybe even pay to have a really professional logo made it really doesn't affect the sales or the performance of your brand in the beginning as much so just keep it simple don't overthink it. So we'll look through here. Like that one's, this one here is not too bad. It's simple, but we'll see what our other options are. I actually kind of like this one. Yes, yeah, so this one's good. It looks glossy and shiny and it's it's bright. So, you know, it's eye catching. There's a number of things we can do with this from here. So what I would probably do next, maybe let's shrink it a little bit. And then we'll head over to text. And then you can add all kinds of text guys. And they have all kinds of cool fonts. And they also have some like templates down here you can use. Let's see what we can do with that. And we'll do like juice mates. And then you can edit so they have like effects too. So you can do like none, which kind of just lets it, you know, the bold black font. So that actually had an effect on it. So if you click shadow, that's what it used to look like. And it kind of adds like a little shadow effect behind it. They have the lift, which kind of makes it look like it's kind of, you know, lifted. Or you can do none, which is like this, which also looks pretty good. So you just want to play around with it. Um, I like things simple. So, you know, this is kind of cool for me. And um, you can come here and just kind of go like, kind of play around with it just to kind of, you know, like just mess around with it to see what looks best. So like, that's not too bad. And then what we could also do, you know, since it's orange, we could use orange as our brand color, kind of like the competitor was doing. And you come in here and just highlight this, like make that orange. So, you know, juice mate. So I think even that, like this here, 
is a good enough logo. Like you could do this. Um, I might change it up a little bit, but this is good enough and a perfect example of a logo that you would use on just a test store. Now, obviously, you know, when you blow up and you start making thousands of dollars a day, you definitely want to make this a better logo. That's just something, you know, I see a lot of people who just way overthink their business name and their logo idea. Like, all that stuff you can actually change. Like if I wanted to in the future change Juice Mate to a different name, I could easily do that. And all I would do is just simply change out the logo and the name and Shopify and it'd be all good. And the TikTok username. So it really is not an issue if you want to change your name in the future, just pick something that's catchy and simple and it will take you a long way guys. And so I also just had the idea too, like maybe try to put the um, kind of similar to what the competitor did is just kind of make this white. And then we can take this logo here and just put it right on the orange, which also looks good as well. And then we'll take here, size it up and then expand the text a little bit. So even that, like I actually kind of like that a lot. I think I'll use this for like the TikTok logo, um, just cause I feel like this would look really good on the profile picture. Um, but for the website, I might go with the original one we did, but you could save this too. Like here, here's what we'll do is um, we could test both logos. So, so when you're done and ready to download your logo, you just come up here to share, click download um, and always download it as transparent guys, because when you upload it into the Shopify dashboard as your logo, you want to be transparent against the header. If not, you'll see this big square transparent. Um, you can keep it the same size if you want to. Um, I usually scale it up a little bit because the sizing is kind of weird on the Shopify stores. Definitely recommend doing that. And then you just click download. All right guys, so here's our logo right here. The next thing I kind of do, because again, like I said, the sizing is kind of weird on Shopify. A lot of times the logos will appear smaller. Um, it's hard to get them to, you know, be the right size and nice and big. So I'll actually open up Photoshop and I'll just kind of crop the outer edges of this. So it's more like confined to the orange. So I'll just literally go like this. Super easy, super simple. And just like that, that's all you need to do. Then we'll hit save. All right guys, so when your logo is done and ready to upload it into Shopify, you'll just come here to the um, sections tab. You'll wanna be on header. So you can click header here to go into that, or you can come here and just simply click the header on the image. And then you'll come down to logo image and you'll tick, click change, select image, upload. Then we'll select the logo we made in Canva and that will upload. Okay, and then we'll select, select, and there it is guys. So it's right there and that's a good size, but you can come down here and where it says custom logo width, we can actually expand this. So as you can see, we can make it bigger. Um, I like it to be, you know, kind of medium, but you want it to be legible so you can read it if there's words um, and also, you know, understand it. So I think it'll go a little bit smaller. Um, I think that right there is perfect. Save that. Always make sure to save guys too. You don't want to lose your progress. So. so now what I'll do next guys with the website is I'll actually come through and change the colors. And um, like I said earlier, you do that by coming here to this little paintbrush it's called theme settings, then colors. And now here you have access to all the colors that you need to change. Um, so what I'll do to get the brand colors is I actually have a plugin up here called Colorzilla. It's, a, it's just a free Google Chrome extension. You can just literally click this, um, pick color from page. So it copies the color code so that I can then paste it into here. So let's say we want to do background two, then we'll paste it in the color code. So it makes it the logo color of our thing. And I actually kind of like this. I think it looks good. I think that's a good shade of orange. It's bright and you know, it kind of stands out. Yeah, so I think that's good. And also guys too, like I'll actually just come through here and get rid of these because no, I only have one product I'm selling, so you can just click the hide button right here. Just get rid of all this. And I kind of just clean it all off and then I'll add what I want. So I can start from like a fresh clean slate. So it's simply just the image with text that we'll see when people are greeted with the store on the homepage and then subscribe to emails. And guys, I keep this extremely simple because most people aren't even really gonna see your homepage. They're gonna be on your product page. So I'll literally just put a nice lifestyle image right here where the main image is, a little bit of branding, and then I'll have my product, featured product right here. All I'll do, super simple and it works. Super high converting. And guys, I've built Shopify stores with a five to 7% conversion rate using this exact kind of strategy and layout. So this does work. I can confirm personally, it will sell. So just make sure you format everything kind of the same way I do it because that's just what works. Um, if you want to test better ideas, I definitely recommend doing that too. All right, so next thing we're going to do guys is find an image to actually put right in here. All right, so we changed the second background. I think I'm gonna get rid of this gradient here so we can use the solid colors. I don't really want a gradient. And since most of you guys are starting out, I'm not really gonna mess with the gradients because it can get a little complicated and I just wanna keep it as simple as possible so you guys can understand. So get rid of the gradients if you want solid backgrounds. And we'll come into here and actually make this solid white because it's actually kind of cream here and you can drag this too. So 
think that looks a little bit better. We can try maybe like a light orange because I saw that he had did something similar to that. Kind of like this. This actually doesn't look too bad. And then we'll keep the button outlines black. Text we can keep black. Um, we could also test white, but I'll just leave it black. And then we'll get rid of this gradient because it's a gradient. We're not going to mess with gradients. So these are accent colors, guys. And this is like little things, you know, like sales tags and just little accents on the site. They'll show up in this color and this color. I'll basically just come in here. You can make it like your brand color, but I kind of just for now, I'm going to leave it white. Um, and when we see it later on, like on our product pages and stuff, we can change it if it looks bad. But for now, we'll just leave that white. So let's take a look here. Um, solid button label. We also want that to be white. And the solid button label, guys, is actually the text that's on the front of your button. So when we put an image here, you'll see that a button will also appear there. It'll say like shop now, or you can type like, you know, learn more, whatever you want it to say. You can link it to your product or your product pages. You can link it to a specific product or specific collection, so super useful. Um, but I'll show you that when we upload that image. And up here, guys, is kind of like the announcement bar. So you can actually change the text of this. Usually I kind of use it as like a way to help convert the customer. So if I have like a buy one, get one 15% off or any offer that you're using, I would kind of flex it up here. So what I usually like to do if I don't have like a buy one, get one 15% off or something like that, I'll just usually simply put like holiday sale. Obviously it has to be during the holiday season to do that, but you know, I can do like summer sale, fall sale, winter sale, holiday sale, like just, you know, make up a sale. So like say like holiday sale and then ends today. And I always do that to kind of create urgency because a lot of the sales you're going to get from drop shipping are going to be impulse buys. So people who are just like, oh, well, they see it and they buy it right away. So you really want to contribute to that. And so that makes it super easy. And sometimes too, I'll put like hashtag and then the TikTok handle. So you could do like hashtag juice mates. It just makes it look official and branded and we'll actually leave it like that. This is really right here, all you need to do. And some people put like free shipping, you know, you can kind of customize the way you want, but this has worked for me very, very well. All right guys, so the next thing we wanna do is actually start getting the images on here. This main image here, usually called like the banner image or slide image. So we'll click on that and that brings us to it and we can change the cover image immediately. So you do a number of things, like I sometimes will put custom content here of the product. You can put a video like slash GIF, just a simple picture. And if you don't have any like supplier images or custom content, yet um, you can actually come in here to select image and Shopify actually has a bunch of free images that you can use that are all royalty free so if we search like fruit so there's a bunch of free pictures of fruit we could use so maybe they'll have the images of juicers so here's some juice and as you can see here it just pops it right up in there for you so you can all use these it's pretty useful if you're kind of lacking in images but I kind of have my own I'm gonna use it of the product so that's what we'll do and guys um, if you need images from Aliexpress you can just download them um, you can come here and like click save image as and that's all you really gotta do to download the images um, also too you can kind of just download them from your competitor site too if they have right click so just come here click save image as and again I'm not like trying to like promote Steam stealing people's content. Um, this guy doesn't have custom content. This is just straight supplier images from AliExpress. So it's okay to steal that. If they have like obvious custom content, I won't take it from their website. I'll just try to make my own. But for the sake of testing, we're just gonna take it from here because it's in one place for us. Um, and then obviously, you know, when we order the product to our house, we'll take custom content and then put that on the website. So we'll go to library, upload, and we'll come into here and we'll select one of the images. So let's see what this looks like. All right, and this doesn't look too bad at all, guys. Um, you know, for a start, it's it works. Um, obviously, you know, what I would probably do is get a custom GIF made of the product and have it on the homepage, because I just think that looks good. But also too, like the homepage, again, it just doesn't really matter because most people aren't even gonna see it. So you just need to have it completed and filled out. So if they do go to it, it doesn't look scammy and incomplete and, you know, just sketchy but um, that doesn't look bad. And another thing I'll do too is actually pop this into Photoshop and basically take my logo and just stick it right on. So it's super simple to do and it also makes your product look branded. So I highly recommend Photoshopping your logo onto the product images. So in the future, if you guys want like a separate video on how I go like kind of in depth on how I make custom content and shoot it, film and edit all that stuff, Photoshop and Canva, I 100% would like to do that. So just let me know in the comments if you're interested in that kind of thing. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that myself here. All right, so we got this here the next thing you want to do is actually edit this text usually you can put like a little slogan here things like that so you know you could do like healthy and fresh kind of like you know that's simple it's easy you know healthy and fresh it kind of represents what the brand stands for because obviously we're a juice brand we're making juice and here too like i sometimes won't even fill this in guys i'll kind of just leave it blank and i think that looks fine healthy and fresh here i usually like to put like instead of subscribe your emails i'll put like join our loyalty 
program, just cause that makes it more like a community based thing. And it also just kind of more brand and that's good how it is. And here I kind of just get rid of this cause I personally don't really mess with this stuff. Most people don't see it anyway. So this is a super simple homepage. What I'll do now is I'll kind of add in the featured product. And if you want to add this in, you can come here and kind of put your mouse in between two images. There's a plus section, you add section. Um, now you could search like featured product or you can scroll down and they have all the um, cool little things like collapsible content, collection lists. You know, you can kind of play around with it, see what you like, but. I simply just go with featured product. Obviously we don't have a product yet. So I'm gonna show you guys next how to import products from AliExpress. And then what we'll do is we'll import that product and then we'll link it to this featured product on the homepage. All right guys, so now we're gonna go through the process of linking our AliExpress product to our store. And you do that through an app called Deezers. So I'll show you guys how this works right now. So when you're in the Shopify admin right here, you'll look down here and it says apps. So you just click on that. So you just click on apps and then you go to just type in Deezer and right here, this is the one you want to use. So just click that. And Deezer is just free guys. They do have a paid plan, but there is a free plan. So don't even worry about that. You'll just click add app and it'll bring you to this page to install it on Shopify. So you just click install app and then Deezer will prompt me to go through the setup process, which is super simple. So you can just click sign up here. You'll go through the process. You just need an email address. You'll also need an AliExpress account, but you can easily make that on AliExpress by clicking sign up and create an account. I think you can also do it through Deezer's, but it's super simple. Um, I'll go ahead and log in with mine and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so here we are in Deezer's. We've installed it to Shopify and now created the account. So it will bring you to a page like this. And what we wanna do next is go and copy the supplier link that we want to use for AliExpress. So you come up to the supplier page that you want to use, copy the link up here, come into Deezers, and then what you'll do um, is click the import list. But first you want to make sure that your store is actually linked. So we'll come down to link more stores. So once you click that, it'll take you back to this and it says installed here, so it should be good. All right, so we'll go to import this now and we'll see if it's connected soon. Sometimes it can be kind of weird about that, but you'll just come up here to import list, paste the link, click search. And there it is right there, guys. And these are a bunch of products I've run in the past. I don't really care if you see them, but so here it is right here. Now to get it onto the Shopify product page, we'll just simply come to push to Shopify. You'll click push, select your store. Um, I would just select both of these as well. And then click push to store. All right, so it says successfully push. So we'll go see if it's on Shopify and we'll go to products. And there it is right there, guys. So we've now successfully pushed the product to Shopify. You don't really need Deezers anymore, so you can exit out of that. So now what we'll do is we'll start customizing the product and getting it all set up. So we'll head into here. All right, guys, so this is what the product page looks like on the Shopify admin. You can edit your title. This is your description right here. If we scroll down, you have the media, so we can add in all our pictures. Deezers automatically imports all the product images for you, which is kind of nice, but most of these we probably won't use, um, especially when we move into custom content. Here you can set the price and then also the compare app price. And that is like, you know, when it's, it's on sale for $28.40 from $50, $80, that's what, you'll, that's what you use. And I use that on every single one of my store guys. It's definitely something you should do. You can also put in the cost per item. So that way Shopify can calculate, you know, your net profit and things like that. It's nice. Um, this is just inventory, but Deezers has all that covered. So you don't really need to mess with any of this. It is a physical product. What we'll start with guys is um, actually editing the title. Obviously you cannot use this long title from AliExpress. So, and we'll just use it as the name. So juice mate. And I usually like to add in the trademark sign. I think that just works really well. And then I always delete all this guys. Like you just don't need this. It looks scammy and kind of sketchy. So just delete all of that. Um, I don't like this image either. So we'll get rid of that. That one's okay. So let's delete these. We can add media as well. So we'll add in our main product image that we were using. And if you put it here, guys, that's the first one they're going to see. So there it is right there. Um, these ones are okay for now. We'll see later. Then we'll come down to our pricing. So the cost is $28.40. Um, the competitor was selling for $45.99, um, which I think is a price that we're gonna also wanna come in and sell at because that'll leave us with over a $17 profit margin, which as long as the profit margin guys is $15 plus, then I would say it's okay to sell because you know you wanna be making at least $15 in order for it to really be worth it. You can get away with $10, but if you're gonna sell a product with only $10 profit or less, you're gonna wanna have a lot of upsells to actually boost that average order value up so you are bringing more like $15 plus home. The general rule of thumb is generally you want to price your products three, two to three X what it costs to get them. But because this is kind of expensive, we're only going to match the competitor. So he's selling for 
$5.99. So we'll just do the same price. And guys, we know this product is selling because he's making sales. We've looked in Shop Hunter. So we know it's selling at that price. So you don't really need to worry about price too much if you're pricing too high or low. We already know that that price is good. Guys, don't be afraid to jack this um, compare price up. So we'll do like $45. So we'll say it's on sale for 90 bucks. So that's a 50% off sale. Actually, I guess that would be 92. I did just did the math. So that way we have it set for a 50% off sale. You can do this. I like to do it just because. So this was 28. We'll just say it was $29, you know, because of tax and stuff. So that's a 36.9% margin, about $17 profit. Um, which isn't bad, 36% is a good margin. It's not the best, usually on my organic products I can get up to 50, 60% margin, but still $17 profit per unit sold is not bad. And again, we don't have to mess with any of this stuff down here. And also too guys, when you import products, you wanna make sure that they're active on your online store. So make sure that that is set to active, and then come down here, sales channels and apps, this is all super important. Click manage, okay, make sure online store is selected, click done, all right, so that's good. And yet, as you can see, it says online store with a green dot, so that means it's live on your store. So for this product, description you know I usually like to keep it structured like you know a nice little paragraph then we'll do a gif then paragraph again so I always alternate between text image text because it's super easy for the reader you don't want them to have to read a ton you know you want you want to give them the choice whether they can look at the images and gifs and understand the product or actually read it if they want more detail and guys will kind of just come in here and um use kind of the same kind of text that they'll use. And then I kind of switch it up a little bit, you know, kind of put it into my own words. You can use the same text as them as you want, but I do recommend changing that later on because you know, you want to give yourself an edge over the competitor. So using the same kind of copy and images, when you start really getting a lot of traffic to your store, you, it's not going to give you an edge over them. So definitely change it up eventually. But for the sake of testing, you can kind of just leave it the same. Um, and if you start making sales, I would come in and change that. Um, but just for the sake of, you know, getting the website out as fast as possible and being able to test products as quickly as possible, I would just use the same kind of wording, but just change it up a little bit. Um, so now we added in this text, so we'll add in a nice GIF next. And you can do that by coming here and um, inserting image. Um, this stuff, by the way, too, guys, you can actually come in and edit the text. So you can make it paragraph format or you can make it heading. Um, heading to is smaller. You know, you can do nice little things like that. Um, you can also do italic bold. You can change the color as well, which is nice. And what I like to do, guys, to kind of help add some urgency and scarcity is I'll come in here at the top paragraph. I'll make this text red bold. And I'll do note the juice me is selling out fast due to going viral on social media. So this is a great way to add social proof as well as urgency to the customer. So they see this like, oh, I need to buy this now. It really helps with impulse buys. And I use this on pretty much all my stores and it's worked very well for me. So I'll say like, you know, Juice Mate is selling out fast. You're going viral on social media. There is limited stock available. So make sure to click add to cart to get yours today. And then I guess I'll make this black just so you know, helps get their attention a little bit. All right, so that's good. And I don't see a lot of people do this, guys. So it's one way that you could really give yourself an edge over competition and also boost up your conversion rate. So now we'll add that GIF or you can do a GIF or image, you guys. You don't have to have GIFs, but I definitely recommend when you get the product to your house, film some videos and turn that into a GIF. And that is perfect. So we'll come up to here, do insert image, upload file, and we'll just use the competitor's GIF because that's just kind of what works the best. And then we'll just go add in some more text here. Um, and that should be good for now. I, I don't go too crazy on product descriptions, guys, just simply because most people coming from TikTok kind of know what the product is and they already know they've seen it being used. It is good to have a nice descriptive product page, but again, in the beginning, I just keep it simple. All right, guys, so I added in the last part of the product description. So we have like an easy to operate, easy as one, two, three, and then the GIF from the competitor's website, which we will change eventually once we order the product in our house. After that, that's pretty much it. So the next thing I'll do is actually go look on my cell phone and go to the website to make sure everything kind of looks good. Um, you can also go to more actions here and click view. And this is kind of what your product looks like. Um, so this right here, guys, will actually say sale. But remember when I made all the accents white? So we'll change that to red. If we change the accent to red, it'll change this to red. So we'll fix that. And as I can see here, there's actually an issue. So this is blown out really, really big. But the rest of the product description looks good. This stuff we'll edit later. So I'll fix this. All right, guys, so I think I fixed all that up. So next thing we'll do is we'll head over to the product page. So we'll click here, go to catalog. We'll click our product. Here we are. So I guess it did not fix that. We can actually come here, guys. So accent two, we'll make that red. So now it says sale. 
Um, you can actually make your buy button red too by keeping accent one red because the color red really gets people's attention. Usually I'll just use my brand color. Um, I think I'll just go with that for now. I think it just looks a little bit cleaner and a little less, you know, spammy. It looks like this image is defaulting to that when it should default to this. So I'll have to fix that. This is what it will look like. And all in all, it looks pretty good. So these here guys are super useful. They are collapsible content. You know, you can add in your shipping policy, how to use it and things like that. And it kind of gives people a nice, really easy, quick way to kind of get a gist for your business and how your business operates. It can actually be used to build a lot of trust for the customers. And also guys, I kind of get rid of all of this because it's just not part of the product description. And that's all I really need is the description. I don't need all this extra stuff. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of this. You can always unhide this stuff too if you want to add it back in. I usually just kind of leave it fairly simple. And also too guys, there's a lot of space right here if you notice. It's taken up by product recommendations. So if we back out of that, I mean, you see right here, product recommendations, you just click the eyeball icon on that and that gets rid of that extra space. Here we'll also do join our loyal loyalty program and that just really cleans it up these i also will move up to actually the top of the description and you can do that by clicking this arrow right here on the sections tab and we just got to find them so here they are right here so you can literally just take this little dot icon and drag it up above the description i'll do that for all of those and it brings it right here under the buy button so it's really easily accessible to the customer so we'll come in here and edit these so you can um actually change the icons as well so you can do like this is on chat bubble which is probably we'll leave it on but they have like box carrot like they have a bunch of really cool ones i kind of use the icons based off what the topic of it is raw content this is what the text will be so we'll just say something like just plug the just plug the juice mate in, add your favorite fruit, and enjoy a nice glass of freshly squeezed juice. So, you know, something simple like that. And obviously, you know, you can get more descriptive and in detail with it if you have a super complicated product. But, you know, for that, just for example, I'm going to keep it simple. Kind of do this for all. So for shipping, I usually always say it takes on average 72 hours to process and ship out your orders. Once shipped, you will receive all tracking info via email. And guys, if you have bad shipping times, I would not put in, you know, how long it's gonna take to get to the customer, especially if you're fulfilling through AliExpress, cause that's gonna be, you know, 10 to 15 business days and you don't wanna turn them off from it. You wanna get them through the checkout process first, then show them shipping time. That way they're already invested and committed to buying. So I just say, you know, it takes on average 72 hours to process and ship out the order, which is actually pretty accurate for AliExpress. It can usually take anywhere from a day to three days for them to ship out the orders. Um, it's just the shipping times in general are a long time. Now, if you use a private supplier like me, I can get 24 hour processing. Um, and I have usually five to nine day shipping. So, you know, I could flex that in there sometimes. Generally, I kind of just leave it like this and this works guys. So use the exact wording and you won't have too many issues. And it's good to really be upfront about your shipping as much as you can, because that really helps build trust with the customer. So they kind of know how long it's going to take to get to them, you know, the, just the process. And for shipping, I'll also say free shipping, because that's just a good incentive for them to buy. And then for return policy, I just say we have a 14 day return policy in case the product is lost or damaged upon being received. And what I mean by that guys is if it's lost or damaged once they receive it, obviously if they break it themselves, I'm not saying we have a 14 day return policy. Now you can do that yourself. Like if you want to return an item to them, if they break it, you can. And I kind of do that myself as well, but just for your protection, I kind of like to say that we only return items if they are damaged upon being received. It's kind of the choice of how you want to run your business. If you're doing a lot of money, I would be very, very forgiving to the customers on this stuff. But if you have like five sales, you know, I would just kind of let it go. Um, I usually don't get people asking for returns, guys. I only sell products that are high quality and obviously, you know, I order them to my house myself and I make sure they work well. So I usually don't have any issues with returns. So as long as you guys pick good quality products to sell, you won't really have to worry about this too much. All right, guys, so that looks good. I will have to fix this image. The next thing we wanna do is actually get reviews onto the product page. I and mean, you can do that through an app called Luke's Reviews. They do have about a one week free trial and then it's $10 a month, which isn't bad. And you can actually import all the reviews from AliExpress with this. So I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, so to add the Luke's Reviews app, all you do is very similar to Deezer's. You'll just come to apps right here. 
type in Luke's and then it just pops up right here. So you'll click it right there, click add app, then you'll click install the app. So you'll wanna do the beginner plan guys. I don't really recommend doing any of the other ones. I always do beginner. It has a 14 day free trial, which is nice. Same length as Shopify. So in the event that the two week testing period does not yield any sales, you can easily cancel both of these free trials and you'll walk away without having lost any money. So I'll just click 14 day free trial. Um, and it tries to trick you guys like, oh, take this, no, take the beginner instead. And then this is just telling you to, it's gonna approve the the charge for December 26th, so after the two week free trial. But obviously when you cancel the subscription, you won't have to worry about that, but just click approve. All right, and um, you'll just kind of go through the setup. So continue, English is our language. Um, the star color is gonna be that, and you can edit that, but I kind of just leave it like that. I just kind of skip through this, guys. It's just not that important. And then we'll click import now. So what we wanna do next, guys, you'll be on this import page, and you're just gonna simply drag this button right here up into your little bookmarks tab up here. Um, and that way, when you go to the AliExpress link, you can import the reviews. This one here actually has 12 reviews. So what we'll do is we'll click that little bookmark that we put up there, then click select product and then select our products. And on the plan we have, we can only import 20 at a time. If you get the next level up, you can get the hundred. But honestly, guys, you don't need a lot of reviews on your site. 20 is fine. Come down to all ratings. I usually do four stars and up because you don't want them to be all five star because then it looks kind of sketchy. So you want to keep it, you know, a little bit of negative ones in there too. And then usually I do all countries and then translate to English. Photo reviews are super important, guys. So make sure there's photo reviews. If not, it's not the end of the world, but it's nice to have photo reviews. So you can do like import only reviews with photos. I like to keep it mixed though, so I'll just import what I see. So this one here, working good, device powerful and use. Thank you very much. So perfect review and it has a picture. So we'll click import. This one's five stars, good. It's true to promises, cool with the product. So we'll import that. See here how it says all packing harasho. So sometimes it doesn't really translate very well or the English is broken. I'll just kind of get rid of the text so that way you just have the review. So this one sounds good, it's good. And I'll just kind of import as many as I can. And then that's it. Okay, so we're back on the product page and if we scroll down, we can see that we have our reviews right here. We have 12. Um, I didn't get that many because that's all I really had to work with, but 12 will actually work fine. But I do recommend probably having about 20 to 30 reviews on your product page. And then if we scroll down, you can see that the reviews all show up right down here. All right guys, so this is pretty much it for the product page. This is all you need. You know, you have the nice little images. Eventually we're gonna do custom content for that, but that's later on for testing. This is perfect. This is exactly the type of product page you wanna use. This converts really well. It's clean, it's simple, and it looks branded. So in the future guys, I'll make another video on like kind of what to do when you scale a store and what you should do to your website. And we'll kind of upgrade the website to make it look better and more branded. But when you're testing and it's your first store, this is exactly perfect, guys. And I've got great conversion rates on stores like this, so I know it works. Just do exactly what I did and your stores will be perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about your conversion rate. And also too, guys, if the AliExpress images are super, super bad, and you can't find any good images from the competitor, definitely wait to get the product and then change it out. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually some backend things. For instance, you know, we wanna change this up a little bit. We only have one product, right? We don't need a catalog page. So we just wanna link it straight to our product. And also we wanna change this button. So we're gonna take this button here. If you click on the button, come down to here, you can change the label, you know what you want it to say. We can also choose what you wanna link it to. So we'll click this products and then we'll select our product. So now that button will take us directly to our product. We also want to select our featured product now. So we'll just select that, click select product, select and see how it kind of just pops right in there. And they can actually buy it right from here, which is nice. Also too guys, um, eventually, you know, I'll put a GIF here because I don't want this to match this because it just kind of looks a little lazy. So eventually, you know, if you have custom content, definitely make sure to keep this um, main image different from the main product image just so it looks better. Next thing we want to do is you want to come out of here under your online store tab, you can come down to navigation and we want to edit these menus, right? So when you're on the product page, you know, and you click that little, those little three dots, it brings up, you know, home catalog contact. We want to change the catalog to the product. I'll come here and you can edit this and I'll just say, I'll just name it my product. So juice, juice mates, I'll put the trademark sign right there. And then you want to click this products, juice mate, then apply changes. So there it is right there. Also too, guys, you wanna have a track your order page. This is super important. It allows customers to track their order right from your website, which will also help a lot with customer service since you won't have to be answering so many emails on, oh, when's my package coming? What's the update on my order? It just really saves you time. And it kind of builds trust knowing that you can um, track their order. And it's super simple, guys. I'll show you exactly how to do it. So you just click add menu item right here. Name it track your 
order. I just link them to a website that you can check your order. And that is Parcel App. So it's parcelapps.com slash Ian. And I'll just copy that back to here and then paste the link right there. That, and then we'll click add. And that's it, guys. So when they click on this on your website, it'll take them right to the track your order website. I usually put everything above the contact because having contact last just looks better in my opinion. All right, guys. So that's all for that. All right, guys. So that's pretty much the website finished. The next thing we want to do now is actually do what I like to call like the back end stuff. So we need to set up the shipping rates, Shopify payment gateways, checkout page, as well as some other settings and legal pages. So it's super easy. I'm going to move kind of fast. So, you know, just pay attention and rewind the video if you to hear something again. So you'll want to come to settings right here, guys, to start. And I kind of just work my way down this line one by one by one. So starting off with store details, you're going to want to change the sender email. Reason being is it will show your personal email. That is something the customers can see. That way that's the email they see as your professional one and not your personal one. So super important guys, make sure you do that and then click save. Um, you don't really need users and permissions guys. Um, this is if you know, with my private supplier, for instance, I'll add them as a staff account so they can then fulfill my orders for me. But since you're, you know, going through D servers or even if you choose to use Zendrop, which also has faster shipping, you won't really need this, so disregard it. So now we're gonna set up the payments. So you'll just come in here, guys, and click activate Shopify payments. Here it has checked I'm doing business as an individual or sole proprietor. I do it as an LLC, but for the sake of showing you guys, leave this check. So here we'll have to submit details about the business. So just click that. And it'll ask for your business type. And again, if you've made an LLC for this, you'll click LLC, but most of you guys are gonna be individual slash sole proprietor. All right, guys, so the first thing it's gonna ask you for is your business type. And most of you are gonna be individual slash sole proprietor. You can also do LLC, partnership, non profit corporation. I do LLC because I actually have an LLC and eventually I do recommend doing that. But for now, you don't really need that. If you're starting off, just do individual sole proprietor. So street address, you'll just put in your street address, city, zip code, and then your personal details, you know, first name, last name, business category. I usually do like retail because you know, they don't really have too many categories. And then I'll come under business subcategory. I'll do other merchandise, which is right here. And this doesn't matter that much guys. I wouldn't like, you know, go too hard trying to figure it out. But then, you know, for description of product services, I'll just say we sell portable juicers. And here, this is the customer billing statement. So it will have your personal phone number here. I would recommend also, you know, maybe in the future getting a Google voice number because they're kind of free. At least if you're in the United States, I don't know about other countries, but in the USA, you can get a free Google voice number. And I would use that as your business phone number and put that there. That way the customers don't have access to your private phone number, which is something you know, I'd recommend you do. So I'll input all this info and then we'll move forward from there. All right guys, so after you do that, you'll actually have to add your banking information. So we'll click add bank. And you're not gonna wanna do this guys because this will never transfer your money to your bank account. It just holds it in your Shopify balance. Um, you would need the Shopify debit card to do that. So you wanna add an external bank. And all you'll do guys is put in your routing number and account number and then you'll click complete setup and you'll be good to go. You'll have Shopify payments all set up. All right, guys, so once you have it all set up, you'll come down here and you'll also want to add PayPal. PayPal can be a little difficult sometimes, but I personally haven't had too much issues with them. So I do recommend adding PayPal. You want to make a PayPal business account and then link it to this. And then you'll just click activate PayPal Express Checkout. You'll then sign in with your PayPal account and you'll be good to go. Once you do that, you want to come to checkout and we're going to do accounts are optional in case they want to, you know, make an account. All right, so select what contact method customer needs to check out. I usually do email because we want to collect as many emails as we can. I value the emails over the phone numbers. We want to do require first and last name because we're going to need both names. Optional for address line two. Also for a shipping address phone number, I make that required. We wanna make sure we get their phone number too. I and mean, also too guys, like not a lot of people actually do this and I don't really know why, but there's actually a tipping option at checkout. And I've actually found that most people will actually leave tips on their orders for no reason. So, you know, free money is free money and it helps increase your average order value. So I just click this and I leave these as they are and people will usually leave a tip. So it's pretty awesome. I'll just leave these selected. For marketing options, click pre-selected email. So they automatically selected to sign up to your loyalty program and you also get their email and that's all you need to do guys so just click save all right guys so the next thing we'll do is shipping and delivery and this is very important so just make sure to watch this very carefully what i do so we'll come in here and we'll just delete all the rates because we don't need any of these and we're going to create our own shipping rates so i'll show you in a second it's very easy click add rates so this is for domestic i'm in the united states so obviously you know my domestic is usa and what i do is i create the free one first so i'll just say free standard shipping i mean guys i always put and guys for the shipping times i always put 10 to 15 business days regardless 
regardless of what my shipping times are, because I know they're gonna be long. With AliExpress, it's usually gonna be about 10 to 15 business days, sometimes even later. And you really don't wanna lie here, guys. You wanna make sure you include how long the shipping is because if they don't see a shipping right there, they might decide not to check out or buy your product because they just don't know when it's coming. So, and don't tell them guys that it's shorter, like three to five days when it's not, because that's just gonna create a lot of chargebacks when they actually don't receive the product in three to five days. Always be honest. And then for price, we put zero since it's free. All right, and what I like to do is have shipping upsells. So what I'll do is click add another rate and I'll do priority shipping. And basically what this is, is I basically tell them that it's not faster shipping, but their orders will get shipped out before other ones, which I have the power to do with a private supplier. But you know, obviously if you don't have a private supplier, you can still do it. I always do it on my store regardless. And I make it super cheap, like 199. And you'll just put in here orders get shipped out before regular orders and that 199 guys goes a long way when you're doing you know 50 100 200 300 even a thousand orders you know that's an extra like two grand the next thing what i do as well is I add another one and this one is like a shipping insurance in case the product's damaged or lost when they receive it so instead of you know making them have to return it i'll actually just refund them the product if they bought the shipping upsells so i'll do premium shipping and they'll say includes shipping insurance in case product is lost or damaged. Then I'll do this and I usually make it like $2.99 and that's all the rates I do guys. I just keep it super simple and then always make sure too to do the rest of the world. So if people are checking out from another country, they'll actually be able to purchase because if you don't have the setup guys, they won't be able to buy anything on your website and that's it for the shipping and delivery with cards. I don't mess with that. So this is super important guys markets right here. So we'll click on that. So this basically determines the markets that you're selling in you get to choose what market you want to sell in. So obviously we have our primary market is the United States, but it does not automatically default to international. So if you guys were to just run your store right now, you would only be able to get sales from the United States and you would miss out on all the sales from other countries. So all you have to do is come here and click manage, then just click activate and that's it. It's all good to go. And the nice thing about this guys is it'll actually automatically convert the currency to whoever's on your store from what country. So if they're coming from Canada, it'll immediately convert from USD to CAD, kind of a built-in currency converter. This is also important guys. I feel like not a lot of people do this. Notifications and you can customize the email templates. So you know, every time they get an email from you or their confirm email confirmation, which they're guaranteed to get, it kind of looks super bland and not branded, which might make them get a little sketched out and you don't want chargebacks. So just add your logo in here and then add your brand color in here as well. So, and see that just looks way better already. You know, it looks so much more branded and um, it's gonna really build trust with the customer. So so that's pretty much it for like most of the settings. So this next part is gonna be the legal pages, which is also really important, but it's super easy to do. So just follow my exact steps, guys, so you don't mess anything up. Don't sweat it, it's super easy. So we'll come here to policies. This is where it's gonna, you're gonna have your refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service. Um, you can do a shipping policy. I personally don't mess with it. Same with the contact information. And all you'll do is just click create from template and it will generate one for you. And all you have to do guys for the, is make one edit to the refund policy. So right here, uh, we don't really have a return address. I don't recommend putting your personal address either. Generally, if people want to return a product, I kind of just refund them the full amount. I don't really want to mess with returns. So I just kind of delete this part right here. And then also too, because you can do 30 day return policy. I just say 14, just, you know, for to help kind of protect myself from a lot of refunds, but that's all you got to do. Just come down through here, you know, create from template and create from template. So then we're going to copy this, then hit save guys also too. And you want to open up another tab with your store, come to pages, which is under this online store thing here, click add page. And we're going to call this refunds and returns, then just copy and paste that in there. And then we're going to create another page. So click that go back to here and we're going to copy the privacy policy, copy, go back to the next tab, title this privacy policy, and then just paste it in there, save, create another page come down to terms of service. This is the last one we'll have to do guys. So just copy this terms of service. All right, and save. Um, so that's it right there. So the next thing we wanna do guys is add this to our footer menu. So we'll come to navigation, which is right under pages. Click footer menu, add menu item, and then we'll just click the link, go to pages and we'll add in our refunds and returns first. So just click that and it auto names it for you. Click add and then we'll just do that for all the other ones. Um, I usually do refunds and returns and privacy policy. Click again, pages, terms of service. And then the next one I like to do is actually add in the con your contact form, which is already pre-built in there for you. 
So that way you have search, refunds, privacy policy, terms of service, contact. All right guys, so here we are back on the website. I just kind of want to show you what we did. So if we click these three dots, you know, we got the juice made, track your order. They can also make an account if they want to. Scroll down here. This is our homepage. And as you can see at the bottom of the menu, we have the search, refunds and returns, privacy policy, and all that stuff. So, um, and as you can see here, we still have the Powered by Shopify. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to remove that, which is super important, you know? It's kind of a rookie mistake to not remove that. So you really wanna make sure that's removed so people don't know you're drop shipping. And it's super easy. Again, you'll come to online store here, click the three dots, and then you wanna go to edit languages. Um, and then in the search bar, you wanna type Powered by Shopify. And then or under links, it'll say powered by Shopify. You just wanna click this and then click space. So it deletes it, then click save. And as we can see, it deleted the powered by Shopify. So that looks much better. 2022 Juice Mate looks much more branded and makes you look much more official. And the last thing we have to do guys is now edit the checkout page. So I'll show you what I mean by that. We'll go to Juice Mate. Um, we'll click add to cart and then we'll click checkout. So, if you take a look here, you guys can see that it's completely not branded and it looks really um, sketchy. Uh, you really don't wanna do that. Always remember to change this. It's very easy to forget. So if a customer goes to check out and they see this and it's this crappy logo, you know, no branding, it just, it's gonna turn them off. So once we get into here, click open checkout settings, scroll down and you can change the logo. So we'll put in Juice Me. You usually keep it in the center. You can play around with the sizing guys. Um, we'll see how it looks with large. And then we wanna come down to here to accents and buttons and we wanna change this to our brand color. So orange and orange. Click save. Um, and now see this looks much better, much more branded and it doesn't look as scammy, you know, and just looks much better. And that's it guys. So your checkout is all set up. All right guys, so here's the finished website. It looks good for testing. Um, we have everything set up on the homepage. If we come to the product page, we have you know nice images, reviews, how to use free shipping, return policy, nice little you know elements like this to help encourage the buyer to buy. So this is a website that's finished. They can buy from it. It's all good to go. You guys are set up to make money on your website now. Next thing we're gonna want to focus on this next segment is marketing the product, all with free organic marketing. And we're gonna do that on TikTok. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you need to do, the steps to succeed, how long it's gonna take you, and when you should kill the product. Next part is super important, guys. Highly suggest if you wanna have your first profitable store and you wanna do it soon without failing a million times, take my advice, guys. Do it exactly how I do it. I do this full time, guys. I've been doing this for two years. I have failed a lot, so I know a lot. I've also succeeded a lot. Make sure to like and subscribe so you guys can get more value from me because I'm willing to give this for free, guys. You know, this is really transparent of me. And I've spent a lot of money, guys, learning how to do this stuff. So I'm giving it all away for free. So just make sure to like and subscribe, guys. If you have any questions, guys, please comment them below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. This next part is super important, guys, again. So stay tuned for that. So you've got your product, you've got your website made. So the next thing we wanna do is actually make your TikTok account. And you wanna name the account the same name as your brand name. And then use one of the two logos that we created, whichever one looks the best, or create a new one tailored for TikTok as the profile picture. For the bio guys, make sure you put something that's really gonna tug on people's emotions. So for instance, my juicer product, I would put something like drink healthier, live happier. That's really gonna put the customer in the shoes of someone who owns the product and how they would feel if they Owned it so it's a super effective way to get people to click on your link and guys you can't have a link in bio until you have a thousand followers on TikTok. and i know that sounds kind of daunting and like oh how am i gonna do that and it's actually really really easy you can get the thousand followers guys within one or two videos if they do well and honestly guys if you don't have a thousand followers if you're not getting the views to get a thousand followers you're also not getting the views to make sales anyways so it doesn't really matter if you have your link in bio or not if you have under a thousand followers there's no way you're even making any money so once you have the tiktok account all set up and good to go the next thing you want to do is immediately start filming content for your product and the key guys is consistency you want to be posting three times plus a day i wouldn't do more than four times though and if you can't hit three times a day if you really can't do that at least post one video because if you miss one day of posting it can really screw up the algorithm so you really want to make sure you're consistent with your posting and you want to do this guys for about two weeks once you hit that two week mark if you haven't had any traction on the account or any sales kill the product and just move on you don't want to be married to your product guys if it doesn't work after two weeks from my experience it's probably not going to work and when it comes to creating content guys you want to follow a very specific format 
So the first three seconds of your video matter the most. That's the hook, that's what draws people in and also causes them to watch the rest of your video, which will then boost the algorithm since they watch the full video and the algorithm will then push out your content to more people. Likes and comments, I've noticed, don't really matter as much. It's all about watch time with TikTok. Did they rewatch the video? Did they watch the full video? And did they share the video? Those three things are kind of the most important. Likes and comments don't really matter so much. So have a really good hook. The next thing you wanna do is draw people in with your product so showcase the product what it does don't necessarily you know make it so ad like you want to make the videos like you're kind of just a normal person using the product you can try to do you know like product review with it things like that can work but it's really good to just kind of showcase the product in a fun unique way without trying to shove it down their throats you know and try to make them buy it like don't try to sell the product in the video by saying hey go to my website buy it i'm selling this don't let them know you're selling it at all just simply show the product being used in a fun unique way that will get their attention and get them to watch the full video. That's why I highly stress in the product research phase, finding products that have already gone viral and people are already selling because then you don't really have to worry so much about whether or not your product's going to get people's attention because we already know it will get people's attention because other people are currently going viral with it and we know the algorithm will let this product blow up. So after you've kind of introduced the product, you want to have something in the video that's going to get people to talk, whether that's something you do with the product, something in the background of the video. I wouldn't go too crazy with stuff in the background because you don't want to distract them from the actual point of the video, which is your product. But you want to get people to comment because that can also really help boost the algorithm. Engagement in general is good. Likes and comments aren't that special, but if you can get a lot of people to comment on your video, it can really help because as they're commenting, that video is still playing in the background. So TikTok sees that as a watch. And I like to keep my video videos guys anywhere between 8 to 16 seconds long anything longer than 18 seconds might be a little tough to keep people's attention and get the watch time high anything lower than 8 seconds isn't that big of a deal but you know you want it to be somewhat long because TikTok does like to keep people on their platform so longer form videos do tend to do better than super super short form videos and guys one of the key things to making content on TikTok is you want to make sure your video quality is super good now I just film with a normal iPhone and that's enough and but if you're using like an Android, which nothing wrong with an Android, but the problem is with Android is when you upload a video to TikTok, TikTok degrades the quality of the video. If you upload with an iPhone, it retains that quality. I'm not sure why that is. It's just something to do with the two softwares and operating systems. So I highly suggest getting an iPhone or uploading off of an iPhone because that will help with your quality and that does make a big difference. The next thing I highly recommend is getting a ring light because if your lighting is bad in a video, I'll show you guys an example, you know, one with bad lighting and one with good lighting. With bad lighting, lighting as you can see it's super super grainy and kind of fuzzy looking even though you have a super high quality camera it just looks terrible whereas the one with the lighting it's super clear it's bright and it gets people's attention because it's bright and it's easy to watch it doesn't make your eyes strain it's just a more enjoyable experience which is really going to help with retention and watch time as well as make your brand look more professional what i like to do for my first few pieces of content is go and look at the competitors and actually copy their viral videos and remake them so with tiktok a video that's gone viral before will most likely go viral again if you can recreate it right so definitely try to do that also recreate them and add your own twists on and test different things because you never know like test different hooks and things like that but definitely one of the best ways is to do what is already working and do what is already viral on tiktok and that also is makes it easy for you since you already have video ideas that you can do and guys i promise you don't try to upload someone else's videos on your tiktok account that will not work tiktok knows when you've stolen people's content and they just will not push it out. So and it'll, you'll ruin the account. You will not make any money, I promise you guys. Order the product from Amazon and make your own content. It is so much better and that's how you actually make money. This is kind of something that is gonna take time to perfect. You're not just gonna whip out your phone for the first time and make viral videos. Sometimes that's possible and I've seen that happen with some new people, but it really takes a long time. It took me 22 failed stores before I actually succeeded. And it really, when I started to actually double down on my content and really improve my content, you know, getting a green light and really studying what goes viral and how and creating hundreds of videos, that's when I really started to see success because I started being able to go viral. And if you're viral and your video gets seen by millions of people, you're pretty much guaranteed to make money off it. And the reason I say that is because we've already done the research on the product to know that it sells on TikTok and recently. 
So the whole key to this entire operation is getting your videos viral. We've already done the back end work to know that if we do go viral, we will make money. That's why we did extensive product research. Everyone is different and sometimes it can happen where you won't make money. Like it might take you guys one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stores before you start seeing success or even start seeing your first viral videos. And just remember that just because a video went viral for somebody else does not mean it'll go viral for you. I've had plenty of products that I've tested that went super viral from other people and I could not personally get them viral myself. If you don't go viral on your first few stores, don't get discouraged. Just keep going because eventually you will succeed. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, guys, please comment them below. I'll be responding to all comments. Also, shoot me a DM on Instagram if you're interested in a private supplier or if you just have any questions. And guys, just remember to be persistent and consistent and you will succeed. I have had my fair share of failures in this and it happens to everybody. So remember to like and subscribe because I'll be releasing much more free value on how you guys can do this and succeed with it.